Somebody asked us how much of our food we produce on the farm here. Mm. Easily 100%. Are you eating stuffing? Don't judge me. <laughs> how often do we go to the store? Never. We produce 100% of our food in so much abundance, we are able to sell it. Mike, what are all those boxes for? <laughs> so this is a topic that comes up a lot with uh, channels like ours, how much food we produce. And I would say we probably produce probably a good 60 to 70% of our own food. And it varies based off of the time of year what we're actually producing. Like right now we don't have any goats that we're milking. What well, we could in a couple weeks, right? Yeah. Um, so things like dairy and like flour, you know, other baking products and stuff like that, we definitely purchase at the store. But and fresh fruits and veggies, we still buy when we can't get them from the garden. Right. Which is especially fruit is very limited, really. Yeah, it's like six months out of the year, we can't grow anything, so we're purchasing fresh fruits and vegetables. And a lot of snacks and cereal, like kid food. <laughs> yeah, kid food, which I don't eat any of that. Just just boxes of stuffing. <laughs> I think you eat more of those snack foods than anybody else. I love does. my nutty bars. <laughs> so yeah, we grow, you know, uh, we have a produce stand. We grow tomatoes, green peppers, uh, green beans, sweet corn, all kinds of different stuff, zucchini. Um, and we're able to put up a lot of that in the freezers. Mm -hmm. We choose freezing rather than canning just because of the time it takes. And we have been collecting freezers for the last 14 years. So we have seven freezers that we can <laughs> fill each year. Right now we have four, four plugged in. Mm -hmm. And uh, one we have reserved for our freezer sales uh, for pork this summer and then We'll fill the others with pork and, and beef, but we'll show you what we do have in, in some of our freezers. Yeah, I guess go. keep in mind that we're filming this in late March, so this is probably almost as empty as our freezers will get. Soon we'll be filling them back up. Yeah. They'll, they'll get a little emptier, but this is it. So should we start with the meat freezers? Sure. Our garage is a disaster zone right now. So right. freezer number one, this is our Ta -da. pork, beef, and venison freezer. Yep. So we had a whole beef in here. We have probably a good quarter of it left. Mm -hmm. uh, we had, I don't know. Two deer? Two deer, and we had a pig in here. Yep. And we're out of bacon, almost, right? Yeah. I think we got some jowl bacon left. We're out of sausage, which is my favorite. We have a lot of ground pork, which we have been seasoning into sausage. And that works very well. And we've got steaks that we always save for the end. Yep. And we got hamburger, beef hamburger. A lot of good stuff in here though. This would feed our family for months yet. Yeah, at least one month. <laughs> All right, in the upright, we have our chicken. I like to do the chickens in the upright freezer. I guess I find when we process them ourselves, the upright does a better job of cooling the meat off faster than the chest freezers. But we've got, I don't know, gosh, probably 15 or 20 chickens left in here. Yeah, at least. So our, our plan and is it, that we do like 100 meat chickens every other year. And that's usually enough. Well, and we sell 50 and we keep 50. Yep. We've mentioned this before, we don't eat nearly as much chicken as we used to since we raised beef and pork. One thing we do a lot of though is when um, when we butcher the chickens, we save all the backs and necks and stuff and make chicken broth and uh, it's really good. So I usually have lots of chicken broth in the freezer as well. And you can buy, if you didn't know, Ball makes freezer safe canning jars. So you can't use just any jar. Trust me, I've tried it. Get the freezer safe ones. And I can put these frozen jars right in my microwave to thaw them out and they don't crack or anything. They're really tough. And again, we have no, nothing against home canning people. 
we just don't have time we used to before we, we had to. kids yeah i i got frustrated and fed up with it and freezing saves us so much time we're able to get a lot more in and we are not afraid of a little bit of freezer condensation burn we can make that into a jelly or feed it to the kids and yeah smoothies we're gonna put ice in it anyways um so this is this freezer is veggies from our garden so we got lots of corn tomatoes squash tomato puree mm -hmm. strawberries we picked at a neighboring farm and i've also got like waste bags of broccoli, broccoli. And cauliflower there's peaches from 2020 those aren't looking great but that might be pig, <laughs> pig fodder yeah i clean them out once a year believe it or not um and then i also have like our prepared stuff so like spaghetti sauce i make with our tomatoes and i just freeze the leftovers so it's got beef in it and it's all ready to go i make meat sauce like for enchiladas that's delicious link to the video in the description oh yeah Kelsey's famous meat sauce i started making pesto um with our basil a customer at our farm stand brought us some pesto once and it was so good i had to start making my own but this is where we have like a lot of our working projects and um like prepared food so if it's a weeknight and i need to come out and quick make spaghetti all i have to do is boil noodles and warm up the sauce so it's really nice dairy sweets and my dad's beef <laughs> <laughs> well apart from your dad's beef this is my favorite freezer and i think i have the most work put into this one of all the freezers we have goat's milk that i collected last year and froze for making soap for the family I also have cheeses in here. So like here's a chev that I made in September. And this stuff freezes and thaws really well. I also have ice like, cream sandwiches. Ice cream sandwiches. Uh oh, Mike, you gotta start throwing your packaging away. <laughs> uh like queso blanco, half a wheel, and this thaws out really good too when we can fry it up and have snacks. Um I've got Piece blueberries of fish. in here. A co-worker fish goes as a salmon fisher and she, I give her chicken and she brings me a nice filet of fish, so. Good deal. This, um, right now I'm making maple syrup. So this is maple syrup I made yesterday and froze it. Um, but that's really easy to do too. And it freezes and thaws really well. And then somewhere buried deep down in here, I have cajeta that I made last summer. Caramel from goat's milk. And it's so good. I like hoard it all year until now my goats are going to be fresh and I can make it again. Maybe I'll finally let people eat it. <laughs> I think that's buried down at the bottom. So I tried to organize our freezers based on like the content. So it's easy to find stuff. So beef and pork often have their own freezers. Chicken gets its own freezer. Veggies and like dinner items go in one spot. And then this is dairy and sweets over here. And apparently my father-in-law's beef. Yeah. The cost to run these chest freezers is very minimal. Sorry. Yeah, the energy saver or whatever, the s stickers that come, I think it averages out to about $50 a freezer for a year to run. run. So overall, it's not really all that bad. I would. And, and if the power does go out, these freezers are good for at least 48 hours before we would really need to put a generator on them. Mm -hmm. And where we live, We've had the power go out maybe two or three times, and usually it's within 12 hours the power's back on. I think the longest it's ever gone out was maybe 48 hours. So yeah. we, we're we not really concerned about our food spoiling because of that. I've actually got a generator right there. Um, if we need to plug in the freezers, if the power goes out, then we have that. So. I found the Cajeta. Oh. Looks like chili. <laughs> it does look like chili. Mm. But we also have a root cellar, so we'll go show you the root cellar. Yeah. And he did not close the door the last time. All right, so this is our root cellar in our basement of the barn. And it has not been upkept by me 
or anyone, but it does work. Yeah. We had about 16 bushels of potatoes, and I would say we have about 15 <laughs> bushels of potatoes. I think we can sell more potatoes next year. We could probably sell seed potatoes this year. So, uh, yeah, the, the, it is the end of March, and they are holding up just fine. There are a few that are starting to get little sprouts, but they will easily last another month just fine. Mm -hmm. And the ones that sprout out, we, well, any of these we can plant and I'll, uh, won't have to buy any seed potatoes this year. Yeah. But it hasn't been co a cold winter, but I do either, well, I put them right on the sand and then I just throw a piece of, one inch insulation over the top of them. When it gets really cold, sometimes if I don't do this, the potatoes will freeze. So that's why I have the one inch foam on top that keep, just keeps the uh, frost from hitting them. And if I spent some money and finished this off better with some better insulation, I wouldn't have to do that at all. We usually put squashes down here too at the end of fall. Um, and they rot. And they rot, yeah. <laughs> because we forget about them. Well, we do. Yeah, they, they keep they keep just fine for quite a long time, but we forget about them, and then this time of year we find skeletons of squashes. I feel like this is something we're underutilizing. Eventually, maybe this will be the year we finally get, like, lots of apples that are in good shape. I'd love to try and store apples down here. The apples we got last year, we had, I don't know, maybe two bushels of apples. And they were fine, but there were a lot of imperfect ones. I was afraid to put them down here. Back to the potatoes. Any potatoes that we don't plant, we'll feed to the cows. Mm -hmm. Cows love potatoes. Yeah. Okay, when we bought the house, this barn was packed full of junk. Actually, much like it is now. Um, but just all kinds of metal pieces and things like that. And we didn't know that there was a root cellar here. And there was actually a trap door that folded over the top of that entrance way so we have the the goats over there on that side but there was a, a door that folded down over the top of this and we did not know it was there until we started cleaning it out and we found this trap door well i happened to be on the phone with mike i wasn't even here but mike and his brother were in the barn cleaning it out and uh all of a sudden uh, I hear Mike and his brother say, oh my gosh, <sighs> like, what is it? And I can tell they're really like, I don't, couldn't tell if like something had fallen and somebody had gotten hurt or like what was up and they hung up on me. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to wait to find out. But can you imagine like you buy this new house and you find a secret door in the floor of a barn? Like, you must've been so scared wondering if you'd find skeletons down there or what? We were hoping for buried treasure. Instead you found a root cellar. So there you have it, the 100% homesteaders never go to the store. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, we, we produce enough to provide for our family uh, year round and then sell a lot of extra produce. So mm -hmm. I think we mentioned this before with our, our homestead system, it's more of a, a farming operation. We primarily produce to sell and we keep the rest. So I'm able to grow enough to have a lot of a lot of extra for us where most homesteaders they they uh, provide for themselves first and then you know give give away but or share whatever yeah but, so we're a little bit different than than most but our intent is for the farm to hopefully pay for itself and mm -hmm. uh, provide for us as well yeah well and our community where we live um, like we have the big box grocery stores but it's hard to find like you can't go buy purple potatoes anywhere around us but you can buy them you can buy them here farm. at Sweetbriar Farm there you go and we should mention that we're not um, non-gmo we're not uh, organic farmers well I should say we, we use very minimal pesticides because I do have the bees I mentioned this before with squash bugs I have to spray my squash plants Otherwise, I can lose them within a matter of, of a day. I can have my tiny little seedlings just gone out in the field. Um, so I spray those, but I spot spray. I'm not broadcast spraying the whole field. Now with the abundance of manure that we have, I don't even need to buy fertilizer. So um, we're not organic uh, certified. We 
do the best we can to grow in a clean, healthy fashion. All right, well, that's our, our food stocks. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you yeah. on the next one. Are you eating stuffing?